else I would like to say. Well, that's probably it. So in the end, you may have a bunch of DLLs which contain the classes compiled, and we have a runtime library, which is a separate DLL which contains the garbage collector, which contains the jitter, and which contains a few other things. So we have two components which are basically not small talk, that's the STC compiler, that you, that you only will need it if you do primitive things. And the other thing is the, the runtime library. And that's, that's actually the two things which you don't get in source, because I want to keep my hands off. So we get everything else is open. The whole small talk, everything, even the environments to the, to the because you got all the primitives, of course, you can change everything there, but you don't get the jitter and you don't get the so, so I hope I've answered all these open source questions in advance with that. Um, uh, let's go back to things you can do with this, with this thing. Um, Jan has built here the Jan Run, <coughs> nice guy. He has built in a meta object protocol. Uh, we have to do many, many fancy things with this. And in this department, they also enhanced and continued some work I started long ago with other light codes. So my uh, VM initially uh, supported three bytecode sets, the native smallworks bytecodes, obviously the visual works bytecodes, and uh, JavaScript bytecodes. I abandoned the visual works stuff because I just couldn't figure out what to do with it, but the Java, not JavaScript, sorry, Java bytecodes are still in there. So the machine can, depending on a flag in the method, there's a bit in there which says my bytecodes, actually it's a set of bits, it's just a, the number is in coding. Uh, it says, okay, my bytecodes are Smalltalk bytecodes or they are Java bytecodes. So we can load in the system actually Java classes. And uh, for example, let's we take a look maybe here we have some movie stuff. And, and we have a, we have a, let's look at that thing. So let's inspect this class, debug inspect class. So here we have the all code house Ruby, Ruby exception class, and let's see what the superclass is. It's a Java lang exception, and what is the superclass? Row and the superclass, well, there's some debug coming in. Uh, Java lang object, and the superclass is Java object, and the superclass is object. So um, the Java object is an object. So we could probably say Ruby exception new. Oh, we have to follow this. Borg code house Ruby Ruby exception. Probably we should say basic. previous one. It's based Ruby. It's the previous one. Ah, okay, thanks. Ruby, no, that was one. Uh, Ruby exception basic new. Java. Oh yeah, it's in the Java namespace. So actually it's in a very nested namespace, so if you inspect that, uh, that thing here, uh, we get another namespace, the Java org namespace, and the Java org namespace has the code house in it, and this has this stuff in it, and so on, so the, the Java packages are by with mapped to namespaces, and then we inspect the thing, then we get n or calculate rather than Google inspect. So, and if we invoke a method of that, we have to follow this naming thing, so we can say, okay, that's thing basically we say is fatal. Perform, because on the small box side we have a problem to give this a name. <coughs> perform is fatal with this one around. Yeah. Um, the idea is as a huh? Ah, the title, what's, what's it called? B. B. Capital B. Idea after after the last one. Well, I think you could just probably yes. look at this guy and see what the what the things it's named. So who? Ah, this one. Okay, that's the real name of that thing. I mean, that's Java. It's static. Type so. <coughs> I'm nearly returning. Obviously. It's not much worth doing that, but it's much worth if you want to use some, some uh, existing functionality. So you might, you might find a nice, I don't know, SSH implementation or something and load it and just do it. Or an XML parcel package. Or maybe Ruby. So now I have already loaded Ruby in there and actually
actually I can put my camera on my face. It's here. Uh, I have already loaded the stuff in. And uh, let's go to that. So I have here in my workspace a chart which has changed the syntax and say, okay, it should be Java. Now let's see, 3 plus 4, which would great. Well, we don't get 7, of course not. We get a Java language engine 7. Uh, we don't get plus four, we get a double and integer four. And if we do this, well, where's my output? Somebody here. Uh, oops. Oh, let's try this one. Doesn't work. <laughs> um, I have no idea why it doesn't work. It worked really work before, but probably because I come out of an image. Uh, did you ever try it out of an image? Did you ever try it out of an image? Um, no, this is the problem of the reference that which was virtual. Okay. Uh, maybe if you re initialize, we can try it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, that, should work. that should work. So, so this is brand hot code stuff. And it's ongoing research work, to be honest. So it's not, it's not that's not. Not, nothing of that stuff you see here is a product or a productized. It's just to show you what is possible in this system. And let's try this again. Let's try this again. Yeah, it's loaded a lot of classes new read. So if we if you look at this, you see the, the classes are loaded uh, very lazily and actually it's loading now all this uh, standard stuff from the first touching. And actually, my browsers try to update and catch up, so probably they use the which is actually down. Because they get a lot of change in notifications. Ah, that's much faster. Mm -hmm. Come on. So, while this is loading, uh, ah, it's coming. Hello, Isu. Okay, so it is able to execute this stuff, but only once, not out of the image. But you see where it's going to. I mean, you, you, you get a picture. Uh, maybe maybe in a year or work of your students, this will probably be, be able to run quite a, quite a lot of Java code. Uh, there's another project going on, which is Ruby, compiling Ruby to Smalltalk X bytecodes and using using this browser for an interactive Ruby. Uh, environment, which is also quite cool. We have a we have a bunch of other things in the queue which I will show you here, things like JavaScript and stuff. Um, so uh, yeah that's it's, it's pretty pretty neat environment to do this kind of things. Um, yeah I'm almost done. Actually I'm probably ready I try again my song because I wouldn't let you go without my standalone so I start from scratch. Uh, I'm really I'm a bit this this is more a bit frustrated because it doesn't work, so I start from scratch. I did this a hundred times in the game and now it fails. Let's do Hello World 3. And um, let's create a package again. Hello is a 3. Of course, when you, when you bind and create an executable, you can add all kinds of your own C libraries to it or whatever you have um, and pre-bind it to the dealers. Uh, by the way, just because we call, of course, we also do support FFI. So if you, if you, file, if you happen to file in code which has, I don't know, like um, uh, other people's, like 
expectations of all
uh, I can export right now only XML in my own chart format. So the Monticello export is in the queue. So it's already ready. It's working on that. <laughs> it's already working. It's already working. Okay. So yes. Just tell covers and uh, visual works can read your <laughs> visual works can read your SVX um, XML format as a utility for that. Okay. Great. Thanks. <laughs> so yeah. But, but the, the next thing we, we would need probably, that's, that's something also we, we, we should be agreed upon. How do we deal with this platform specific code? And I really don't like this, the way it's currently done. So maybe we need something like the if that. I'm sorry, but that's definitely great. If we could agree on that, it's much better than having all this, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, platform something, platform something, because what you do is when you edit and you see the if dev there, you might say, okay, I leave the if dev for the other guys just to know they have to change something. So, just as a reminder, or maybe you even know how that would look in the other architecture, you just give it a code also. But if you have all these platform things around, then you just edit your changes and the others have to, have to look for, for change all the time. So, from, from, a, from a transportation point of view, that would be great. Yeah. If I um, understand correctly, you have a way of bootstrapping um, small talk text directly from the source. Is that correct? So you don't have, unlike most other small talks, a kind of binary image that goes back to 1980 or something. <laughs> yes, uh, probably from scratch. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty <coughs> unique to small talk text, isn't it? Uh, uh, I, don't, uh, I think there is. I don't know. Just some does that as well. So, uh, actually, the STC, it, it, it compiles one function for each method, and at the end there is one init function, and when you, you, when you call this init function, then it's also generated by STC. This init function contains calls into the VM to say class new, method new, blah 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 new, and then it, it uses all that stuff. And, and then when you, and then at the end when all the init, when the startup main of STX has called all these init functions, it passes on to Smalltalk start. Actually, it goes, I can show you that. Uh, there's small talk the class side. Actually, my small talk is a class. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, and there is a start method. Uh, here we are. And that's where the whole show, show starts then. So here it does command by analyzing, and for example, the minus minus rebel, which you saw before, is here. And it, it goes in a read about a group. That's, that's the thing we saw before. Okay, um, the X comes probably because from the yeah, uh, if I support multiple platforms and if I support Mac OS in, in particular. The X in small dog X comes maybe because, because it's sexy but also because it was the first small dog which used X Windows native. So it, I developed that at a time when VisualWorks still played in one big window. And uh, so I called it Smalltalk X because it was X Windows based. So my first platform was all Unix machines. And because I compiled to C, I'm pretty fast in supporting new machines, given that they have a decent C compiler, which now with TTC is the fact. So I'm pretty, pretty much easily pointed to every Unix out of the box, more or less. Uh, later, I started to make this whole window binding stuff and multi threading. Uh, by the way, it's multi threaded. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the API, so blocking APIs go in there, but I have only one small talk thread running at a time. Um, then came the, the window stuff, and I never did the old, the old uh, Mac stuff. So when Mac moved to Windows to Unix as well, um, I did not do the work to do, to do that stuff. But you could run it under Linux, you could compile it, and you could run it under Linux because there's a Linux server for, for Mac as well. If there is support and if somebody would pay, because as, as, as I said, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't charge any longer for any money. So this is mostly a tool for our own products. Because we moved away from, from being a small talk vendor to becoming a small talk user. And we use our small talk just to have everything under control. So we are in a good position that we don't have to pay licenses. And we have everything under control. We can just manage this thing, whatever, for whatever we need. And we, for our own products, we use that tool. So, and up to now, we didn't have any, any request for Mac OS, and nobody to pay for it. So, I have a choice. <laughs> uh, I don't get for our products the need, or somebody pays for it. 
I mean, we used to have paying customers. We did a, a VMS port in, uh, some time ago for Kaiser Aluminum, but they no longer exist. So, in, in Washington, you probably might know that. So what's the status of the Windows uh, platform, <coughs> the Windows support? Well, actually, uh, I, was, I never liked Windows much, but uh, at some time they forced me, the other guys forced me in my company, forced me to say, okay, you, you, you are only allowed to work on the Windows from now on, so, so we get a decent version. <laughs> um, the others still work on Linux, which I hate them for. Um, but actually, yes, it works pretty well. So, uh, and, the, and the, for example, I have the, the kernel is not blocking. So, if, for example, if you have a, a, a connect call or a thing like that, I mean, just look at. I'll let me show you. Maybe we have one minute over time because there's a break anyway. Um, let's just say true or true. Do nothing. So now this guy is pretty busy. Uh, but let's start another one. True. Well, true. Do nothing. Well, the system becomes a little bit slow because it does time slicing. So all these processes now get a, get a slice. Actually, if we look at the process monitor, uh, you see these two busy guys down there. And if I double click, you see actually, you can actually update and monitor them, what they're doing. But they sit, actually, they sit in there doing do, and they do, just do nothing. Um, and I can, I can stop them, kill them, I can change their priority. Uh, so within one priority group there is a time slicing and other than that the higher priority gets the CPU, that's how I schedule. Um, so if any of those guys goes into a blocking API call, it uses an AI API called thread 2 and one of those threads and it will block. So the system continues even, for example, you know this problem uh, while you redraw? that the Windows VR are dead. So that's not the case here. Because of this eight, the multi-threaded uh, internal implementation. Actually, I had this wonderful uh, window group scheme 25 years ago, and only recently Middleworks, I think, went to multiple processes per process per, per window. Maybe five years ago? Less than Less than So I think they stole it probably. <laughs> At least the idea. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty it's a pretty good implementation. I think it's one of the best implementations. It's one of the best better ideas I had. The the, the GUI is really great. I mean that's you can have you can have, you can interrupt this guy here. Uh, then you have a debugger on that guy, and still the other one runs. And you can interrupt this guy, and then you have a debugger on that guy. And you can see that and play with each other how they interact and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, actually. You can, so, any other questions? So, is um, all of small topics written in small topics, or are there parts that are? Well, I bootstrapped the thing, and STC is written using LAX, 